Praise God. Welcome to the Mirror of the World. I'm excited that you're able to join today. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I am your regular host. I'll be bringing you the Word of the Lord today. Uh, the Mirror of the World is a program where we read a chapter of the Bible, and then we pray for those who are sick. I pray that as we look into the Word of God today, you are going to be transformed in Jesus' name. Uh, we do this so that we can increase in the knowledge of God. We want to understand His ways. Because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, that the time is coming when the mountain of the house of the Lord will be exalted above all mountains, and people will rush into it, and they will say, Let us go into the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. We want to be people who seek God's way. We want to know what's important to him, was of utmost priority to him. We don't just want to be people who seek his acts, his miracles, what he can do. Because we know that when you move God's heart, his hands will automatically move. The second reason why we do this is because we believe, as it is written in the scripture, that the word of God is like a glass or a mirror. When you look at it, you see the image of Christ. You see what our Lord Jesus Christ has already done for us. So, for example, when you are sick, you look into the mirror of the world. The word says you are healed in the past. So, what happened next is that the Holy Spirit will transform you into the image that you see in the mirror. But you have to see the image first. You have to see the image in the world. The image that says that you are rich. The Bible says that let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. The third reason why we do the mirror of the world is because in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 2, the Bible says that some people, the elders they were called, obtain good report through their faith. So we want to follow those who, through patience and uh, faith, obtain the promise. So we can learn some lessons from them and be encouraged. Uh, the Bible says, again, that we are surrounded by a cloud of witness. In other words, they are waiting for us. They cannot receive their crown until we finish our race. So we want to learn from them so that we don't run in vain. Now, uh, for some times now, we've been looking at faith. I don't like calling it a subject because it's a way of life. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith, according to Romans chapter 1. Uh, verse 17, I believe. So, um, but as we approach what is traditionally called the Holy Week, you know, that's the week in which our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, and then which, you know, after that he resurrected from the dead, uh, we want to look at um, events before and after that. So, what we have been doing since Monday uh, this week is to look at the chapters of the Bible that prepares us towards that. And um, today, by the grace of God, we are going to be reading Matthew chapter 25. So I want to encourage you, don't just watch this video, Matthew chapter 25, because we are building up a picture. So I want to encourage you to please go on our YouTube and watch, it, watch the video we did on Matthew 24. I believe, God, that you are going to be greatly blessed um, by doing that. Um, what we said in Matthew 24 was that we should get ready for the rapture. Jesus is coming soon. He can come anytime. As I'm talking to you, as you're watching this video right now, he can come. If you are watching the live, he can come. If you are watching it later on, he can come at any point in time. The Bible says that he will come when you are not expecting him. And he, we were warned that many false prophets will arise, so be careful. Um, if you think we have enough false prophet, you haven't seen anything yet, because we're going to have, as the days draw near, we're going to have many more false prophet. And the Bible even says that if care is not taken, even the very elect can be deceived. So we said miracle is not a proof of God's approval. The fact that a lot of miracles are happening there doesn't mean that's the will of God, that God is there. The Bible says also that the love of many will wax cold. So make sure. You are not one of those people whose love 
for God have diminished. So let's go into the word of God as our practices. We're going to be reading Matthew chapter 25. Uh, because this is not another preaching session, it's more or less like a Bible study, even though it's not really interactive. I want to encourage you to please get a Bible, either on your phone, hard cover, whatever it is, and let's read the word of the Lord together because I believe God is going to show you something for his word. I am really encouraged, you know, to see those comments and I want you to, ple to, I want to please plead with you to keep the comments coming. Not comments on what I have said, but what did you see from that chapter of the Bible? What is it that the Lord has revealed unto you, the image he wants you to become? So let's read Matthew 25 and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the, into the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. For he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man travelling into a far country, who called his own servant, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man, according to his several ability. And straight away took his journey. Then he that, had, he that has received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them all the five talents. And likewise he that has, had received two, he also gained all the two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his lord's money. After a long time the lord of those servants come and reckon with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliver unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou deliver unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. Then, that, then he which has received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and wet and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there, there thou hast that is time. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knew that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou should therefore have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that hath ten, ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from he that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd defied his sheep from the goat, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on the left. 
Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, and thirsty, and gave thee drink? And when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed you? When saw we sick, or in prison, and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me. Ye curse into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungry, a thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it, not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness into life eternal. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to say something before I go into my notes and what I want to share with us. Um, the, the, the first thing is we've been looking at the last words of Jesus and what happened to him during his death and resurrection. And you know that when someone is on a sick bed and about to die, you know, I don't know for those of us probably who have the privilege of being by the best side of our parents when they are passing on to glory. Um, usually they say some things, you know, which are more or less like the last words and we take those things very seriously and we don't forget it you know as a matter of fact uh, some of them we say this is how I want to be buried this is what I want you to do um, even you find out that people family members who don't even talk to each other if the last week of, of the uh, man dying or the dead person is to say look I want you to reconcile with one another I want you to look out for one another and I want you know everyone we go by by that word so um, it's the same thing. We need to pay attention to what Jesus said on his way to the cross. You know, um, we we Easter is coming and we do the Easter egg and all the celebration and everything. Uh, but we must not miss what he said on his way to the cross. And this is where, this is the cross of the matter. This is the key thing. Um, you know, we, we have to keep it in our mind. Let's just take him and say, let's look this week as, you know, um, although he wasn't sick, you know, uh, let's take it as say he was, we, we knew it that, you know, he was dying, he was going to die, even though he's kind of, uh, he's alive now. Let's look at what he said. Let's look at what he said. And so, um, we, that's why we look at Matthew chapter 24. And he focused around his coming. So I want to summarize Matthew 25 into three main areas. You know, the Lord may show you more to that, but just because of our time, if I'm not able to cover everything that is in my note, because all the chapters will be reading now up onto the, uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are long chapters. So, but I want to summarize into three main areas. The first one is talking about the the parable of the virgin so which means that which says that we are the bride of Jesus and we need light to meet with him our light comes from the knowledge of God through Jesus so uh, the, we are the bride of Jesus and we are being prepared to meet with Jesus that's why you know i said to people that when people read Ephesians chapter 5 and especially the latter part of it talking about husband love your wife or wife submit you know or wasn't really necessarily talking about the relationship between the husband and wife, although that's what it implies, but actually he was talking about the relationship between the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and his bride, you know, and he was just using marriage as an example of that in terms of what we ought to say. 
So um, the second thing is that the first thing is that we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ and we're being prepared to meet with him. The second thing is that God gave each and every one of us talent. God gave everyone gift. There's no one that he didn't give any gift. So he's going to ask you, what did you do with the gifts that God gives you? I, I pray to God that the Holy Spirit we reveal some things to us today and we will stop giving excuses. We stop looking at people who are busy using their own gifts. You know, I, I know we live in the days and age where we celebrate the man of God. We thank God for what they are doing. Hey, but you, you will be shocked that some of the men of God that you are celebrating, maybe God gave them two talents and they've done quite a lot out of the two talents God gave you them and God gave you five talents and you haven't even used your talents. Anyway, we'll get into that and say then the third the third thing there is um our love work. So if I if I want to summarize that, we are the bride of Jesus Christ, uh being prepared for him. He is coming to take us. Uh, the second thing is that he gave us gift, he expects us to use that gift. The third thing is our love work. Now let's begin to take them one by one and see what the Lord will have us to see in his word today. Um the first question I want to ask is looking at the first one is that, you know, getting ready to meet the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ. The question I want to say, are you living to enjoy Jesus on earth or are you living to meet with him? And somebody will say, I am doing both. So which leads to my next question. Are you living to enjoy Jesus on earth, enjoy his blessings, enjoy the miracles, enjoy everything that has got to do with living the goodness of the Lord on earth? Are you living to enjoy that or you are living to meet with him or both? Like somebody will say, what percentage of your time is devoted to meeting with Jesus? And what percentage of your time is devoted to enjoying the goodness of the Lord? So in the parable of the, 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 the 10 virgins that, you know, we have looked, looked like, you know, it does appear to me that, you know, there were 10 of them, five were looking forward to meeting the master while the other five, you know, um, they, they, they had different agenda. You know, uh, the Lord just reminded me of something that I've said many, many years ago. You know, do you know that the five that had got no oil in their lamp, it wasn't that they didn't have money. They, they had enough money, but they probably wanted to use that money for something else. Why the people who are conscious of meeting our Lord Jesus Christ, they were preparing for the, uh, for the master, they were on a journey, they spent all their money to get extra resources. They went the extra mile to make sure that they, they had oil, so that they, there's oil in their lamp, so that you know they can put on the lamp and then it can shine. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. You know, so um, let me read some things that I have in, in my notes. You know, uh, the five, you know, the other five, the foolish ones say our lamps are gone out. So then it is evident that they were once lighted. They have the light. They, 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 they know that it's important to prepare to meet Jesus Christ, you know, but because of the cares of this world, their carelessness, they've got no principle within. They have no prospect or made provision, make provision for what is to come. They were not looking at that. This is a long journey. We're waiting for the master. The master may tarry. You know, we don't even know when he's going to come. So uh, as you as you receive the word of the Lord today, you know, is, is your light shining? How, how rich are you in the knowledge of the word of God? You know, if you look at how much of God that you know, do you only know enough? about God that can get you by the day. I mean, in other words, uh, are the scriptures, the only scripture you meditate on are uh, just scripture on healing, scripture on prosperity, scripture, you know, that we just make you get things from God, or do you meditate on scripture that will help you to know God more, seek his way and walk in his way and walk in his path, uh, where his priority becomes your priority. So I just want you to, uh, ruminate over that and just think about that you know it's not just about the, the lot of folks who go to church nowadays but actually they do not know god you know you just know it by some of the things that you know um uh they do 
So um, that that's it about the parable of, of the 10 virgins, the, as much as I can cover. I have got quite a lot of things in my note, but because of time, I'm not able to go into the details. So how prepared are you? Have you got extra oil? You know, um, is your light shining? You know, how much of God do you actually know? And I keep saying this. I'm not saying this because um, I am attacking, you know, any denomination or anything like that. Um, when when I was doing, I mean, still growing, you know, but in my early foundations, we, we be in the church. I mean, the message then, I remember my pastor will say, look, there's nothing you guys can do. I am going to preach the word. I'm going to teach for a minimum of one hour. So how do you think you can get by with, with a sermon of 30 minutes that they even only make reference to just one scripture in that sermon? They just kind of make reference to two, one or two scriptures maximum, and you think that you will know God by that, you know, and you do not have a private time. Other programs that the church have put in place to support you, you know, a discipleship class, you know, Bible study, you don't participate in any of those things, and you just go to church on Sunday, and you think you're going to have enough light in you to meet with Jesus. It's time to repent. Um, I'll read this. He said that repent while the gates of repentance stand open. Um, the Lord Jesus said, for I receive a gift at present, but when I shall sit in judgment in the age to come, I will receive not. So the doors were closed on them because when they were supposed to take extra oil, use the gift, the resources that they have to get extra oil because they need light. They need oil in their lamp to produce light. They didn't do so. Now, the second point talking about the parable of the 10 talents is that uh, I got two questions. I'm not going to dwell into the details of it. Two questions that God will ask every person, all every person on the face of the heart. The, the number one question is, what did you do with Jesus? And the second one is, what did you do with the talents that God gave you. What did you do with Jesus? So, so many people are going to be separated on that. And the second is that what did you do with the gifts that he gave you? And so many people are going to be separated, you know, on that too. So uh, the Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, that Christ gave each one of us a special gift. Everyone received what he wanted to give them. In other words, and the Bible says according to our several ability, when we look at that, the parable of talent according to several ability that you know in other words in god's wisdom he knows the capacity of every single person that he has created and then he gave them gifts based on that you know on their capacity so i i want you to note something please uh i want you to know something that um the gifts cannot be wasted you know they don't need that gift in in heaven so when someone dies the person is not going to go to heaven with those with that, with those gifts. So that's why the graveyard is the richest place on earth. Because in 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 the cemetery you have unsung hymns. In the in in the cemetery you have poems that were never written. In the cemetery you have sermons were not that were not preached. In the cemetery you have great wonderful things that will have benefited man, mankind. You know, uh, which which never came. You know, which were never back. So I want you to know that the gifts cannot be wasted. Uh, if you don't use it, it will be taken from you. That's a key lesson from the parable of the, of the talents. Like I said to you, um, because some of us are following people who are actually using the gifts that have been given unto us because we've refused to use our gift. I pray to you today as you listen to this word that something is going to happen in your spirit. You know, something is going to prick you and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm not going to let somebody has used my gift. I am going to use the gifts and the talent that the Lord has given unto me. I will not allow it to be taken away. Listen to what verse 28 and 29 of the Matthew chapter 25 that we read. They said, take therefore the talent from him and give it, or give it unto him that hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. So the one who is multiplying us, who is using his talent, more shall be given unto him. So i give you a practical example. When the pastor says, I go out on evangelism, it may appear that, oh, pastor wants the church to grow, but actually it's not because pastor wants the church to grow. I like what Paul appears to say, he say, not that I desire a gift. 
but I desire a food that abounds to your account. So it's not so much about, let's not get too much deep into these church activities. It's something that abounds to our account. Jesus Christ said, lay up your treasure in heaven where it cannot be corrupted. So um, as you're hearing me today, like I said earlier on, please take a decision to discover and use your gifts. You must complete your assignment to the last details. You know, this is what our Lord Jesus Christ, even Paul, the apostle said the same thing. He said, I have finished the race. In other words, everything God has assigned to me, I have done it. So let's read John 17 for, I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible Translation. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I glorify you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. Oh, you know, um, the Lord just reminded me now, you know, when we sing that song, glorify your name, glorify your name, uh, or, 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 you know, glorify your name in our life. The way God is glorified in our life is not by us just receiving miracles and giving testimonies and uh, people are shouting hallelujah. The way God is glorified in our life is by completing his assignment. I, I, I just saw that right now in that scripture. Jesus said, I glorified you on heart. How? By completing down to the last details what you assigned me to do. So when you do what God has assigned you to do, you bring glory to his name. When you are healed, you bring glory to his name. But when you much more than being healed, much more than, you know, um, prospering, much more than enjoying the goodness of the Lord, when you do what he has assigned you to do, you bring glory to his name. So you are on earth and where you are now, uh, you are on earth and where you are for a particular reason. There's a reason why God is allowing you to live in Sheffield. God is allowing you to live in Sokoto or in Kebi or in Dallas, Texas, you know, uh, in India, in wherever you are in different parts of the world, God allow you to live in there because he has an assignment for you. Finally, uh, the third thing is uh, our love walk will be judged, you know. Um, Everything which is done to a follower of Christ, whether it be good or evil, Jesus consider it as being done to himself. I say this to people that say we are members of his body. Uh, when you hurt your brother, you are hurting the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you bless your brother, you are blessing our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he said, you know, in the last parable, the last illustration that he gave us to say, I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was homeless, you gave me room. I was shivering, you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Every time you do any of this, you know, especially to the members of your family and to the members of the household of faith. So, for example, uh, you, you are married, your, your, your both of you are Christian. So uh, when you, as a husband, you get into the kitchen and then you cook for your wife, even though you think you are cooking for your wife, Jesus wasn't there, but you're actually doing it to Jesus. When you abuse your husband, you are abusing Jesus. This is just fundamental truth that we need to really understand, you know. When you abuse your pastor, you are abusing Jesus Christ. When you abuse the people that you are leading and you take advantage of them, what are you doing? You are taking advantage of our Lord Jesus Christ and you are not walking in love. That's what this last part, you know, in that chapter is all about. So, uh, in conclusion, are you looking forward to meeting the master how is your light your purity he is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle you know how serious are you with being filled with the knowledge of his will with the knowledge of god this brings light that's what the bible says what have you done with the gifts he gave you and finally what does your love lie looks like so as we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must be full of light, increase in the knowledge of God. We must discover and use our talents to produce more fruit, and we must be diligent in our love work. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We pray for everyone that is sick. 
in their heart. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you will mend every heart that is broken today in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to pour the oil of gladness into their heart, cause someone to rejoice. Give them joy unspeakable in Jesus' name. I command every amen, every sign, symptoms to go right now in Jesus' name. Lord, to that person who's watched this video and they have taken in a decision to um, to run for you, to work for you, to use their talent, Lord, I release your wisdom, I release grace into their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for every single person. Lord, even though, Lord, we're not mentioning any particular ailment tonight, Lord, we, we thank you because we are made whole by the stripe of Jesus. Thank you because you, you have shown us the image that we are healed by the stripe of Jesus, and that's what we are going to become by the help of your Spirit. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Quickly, before I go, I won't go without doing this. Please say yes to Jesus. That's all I'm going to say today. Say yes to Jesus. Every man, all nations, they were all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And the number one criteria is going to be, do you believe in Jesus? The Bible says that he who believes is not condemned. So your belief is actually taking you out of condemnation. That's what your belief. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you confess him as your Lord and as your Savior, what you are doing is that you are taking yourself out of condemnation. And that's what I'm asking you to do today. I'm asking you to come out of condemnation. I'm asking you to come out, you know, from that guilt. You know, I'm asking you to come out for whatever you are, no matter how bad you think, you know, your sins are, you know, what, no matter what you think you are. God has already made provision for that and he wants to accept you and he wants to shower you with his love. So if you want to say yes to Jesus and you want him to become uh, your Lord, you want him to become your master, I want you to please say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you very much for watching this video and for saying that prayer. Uh, and I want to say congratulations to you. I want you to do one more thing for me. You will see my address on the screen. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, the email address and the telephone number is on the screen. I have some spiritual materials which I want to send to you free of charge that is going to help you grow. You remember one of the things we said that as we prepare to meet the master, uh, we must be full of light, you know, and that light comes from the knowledge of God. So you need to increase in the knowledge of God. I also want you to find a local church around you that you can join. Uh, if you live in the Bedfordshire, you know, Hermit Hempstead, you know, North London um, area, you know, our meeting kings, we are based in Luton. And you can join us, you know, you can be part of the fellowship and we do as much as God wants us to do in your life. Uh, maybe you just need uh, pastoral counseling, care and support, whatever it is. You just want to talk to somebody. You've got question that you want to answer. Maybe you don't even believe in God at all. And you just say, all this God thing you are talking about is just, you know, is 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 fake, you know, it's nonsense. And you want somebody you want to talk to. Um we are not going to prove God to you because God is able to answer for Himself. No, uh, we're not. We're gonna. We're not going to uh, try and fight on God's behalf because <laughs> He is Almighty. He can defend Himself. But we will point you. We will show you. We will give you some example. We will share some testimony with you. We will take you through real life examples of life that can show to you that indeed God is real and is ever present help in times of need. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. I want to thank you very much for staying till the end, for watching this particular video uh, to the end. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel so that anytime we uh, release a new video um um uh you can you know get the alert you know by email and then you can go on to it and then you can go and wa watch the 
um, uh, the, the video. I also want you to please, if you think that uh, this is going to be a blessing to someone, together with your comment, please don't forget to write your comment, you know, comment about what did you see in the word of the Lord today. That's what I'm keen about. What did you get from the chapter of the Bible we read today? Something you were taking away, something you're going to work on. Please don't forget to write that comment down, you know, and then share this video either on YouTube or share the video on your Facebook page and let's be a blessing. That might be your own love work because you are saving uh, someone and who have gone outside the love zone, you are bringing them back into the love zone where the goodness of the Lord can reach them. Uh, thank you very much. And until same time tomorrow, we're going to continue. We're going to go on to Matthew chapter 26, you know, and we're going to just go all through to Matthew chapter 28. And I am looking forward to what the Lord is going to reveal to us as we look at Matthew 26 uh, tomorrow. At uh, 10 p.m. UK time, we are live on Facebook every day. God bless you and bye.